Dave Palumbo here with Muscle Serpents Daily, guys. And it's Wednesday morning, and guess what? We're in the Arts Muscle Studios again. You know why? Because we're going to talk about scaleless ball python, how to keep them, and how to make them. Okay, because I've seen a lot of videos lately, guys, where people are kind of making them seem like they're very complex to keep, and they're making people think that, hey, this is a lot of work. And you know people are lazy by nature, and they won't keep things that they think it's a lot of work. And I'm here to tell you it's not a lot of work. So what do I have here? This is my very first male scaleless head that I uh, bought. And if you look at him, if we get a look at his head here, we can see that there's some scales missing on there, right in the front area. Not a lot. Not too many, but there's some missing scales, and that's why they're called scaleless head. And when you breed two scaleless heads together, which is an incomplete dominant gene, you get a homozygous form of it, which is a completely scaleless animal. I produced my very first scaleless animal this year. Now, I'm going to show you another way to tell. Sometimes they have so few scales missing on their head that you can't tell, but if you flip them over and you look at their last scale right before the vent here, if there's a split, you see this little line right here in this? This should normally be a one, one scale. If you have a little line down there, a split in it, that means, that's one of the markers that you have a scaleless head here. So this is definitively a scaleless head. Obviously, I know this because I've bred them, but that's the way to tell. And this boy, okay, is the dad to the snake I'm going to show you in a minute. So this scaleless head is like a regular ball python. There's no extra care needed. They don't have no extra, you know, needs. This is a regular ball python, maybe a blade. I'm not sure. Uh, the person wasn't sure that I bought it from, but if you see, he's got a little bit of extra shine. His pattern's sticking out a little bit more. It's not quite an inchy-ish look, but it's, it's, there's something more to it. And what you'll notice is that the scaleless heads don't just have missing scales. They also have an enhancement of color and vibrance to them. That, it's the best way I can, I can put it. And you see that same transference of that enhancement when you go to the fully homozygous animal, which means two copies of the scaleless head gene produces the scaleless animal. And that's going to produce this. This is the son, or the daughter, I should say, of this guy. Now, once again, no scales whatsoever. Um, completely scaleless. And you can see, this does not look like a regular ball python. There's a lot of vibrance here. And it almost looks like, they, I mean, it could be like a pastelish looking or butterish. And that's because they once you remove all the outer scales, you can actually see the true color of the snake. It's not def deflected. But once again, same snake, no scales, scales. Okay. Now, what are the challenges of having a scaleless ball python? Because if you look at it and we turn it over, there's no scales even on the ventral side, which is the bottom side. There's no belly scales whatsoever. This is a completely scaleless animal. Um, what can happen is their skin gets a little dry sometimes, okay? And when they shed, that could be a problem. Because if, if they're too dry, okay, the this, this shed's not going to come off very well. And because they don't have scales, what invariably happens is it just sticks to them. And or, if you try to pull it off, you can tear it. So you don't want that. So the key is to keep these things moist. However, if you keep them too wet, that's not good for their skin either. So what a lot of people are doing is they're creating all these protocols where water dishes, they have one dish for the, the hot side, one dish for the cool side, they have to hide it. Too complicated. All you got to do is get this stuff called bag bomb. Okay? It's a lubricant. It looks like almost like Vaseline almost. And people put this on like leather and stuff like that to keep it moist, okay? You take a little in your hand and you rub it on the snake, literally once a week. It's like, it's like moisturizing a baseball mitt. When I was a kid, my dad, you know, bought me this baseball mitt and he had me rub all this like, you know, uh, oil into it. And you basically moisturize the snake with this. And the, the good thing about this is that it stays moist for, for days, you know? It's a moisturizer. And, but yet it has oil in it, so it's, it's not water-based. It's not going to dry out. If you just try to keep these things moist by spraying them down, they dry right out again. And if you keep this snake nice and moisturized like this, and I purposely let it dry out so you guys can see what it would look like when it's moisturized. It looks totally different. My hands are moisturized, too. Now, when this snake has to shed, that shed will come right off. And the worst-case scenario is you'll see the snake, 
and it'll maybe get the shed almost halfway off, and then you can just roll it off like a fruit roll-up. You remember when you were a kid, you had the fruit roll-ups? I might be showing my age. I don't know if they still have fruit roll-ups today, but it will roll right off. But most of the time, if I keep them well moisturized like this, there's no problem with this guy, you know, shedding. I have no problems. And you know what I noticed? And I don't know if this is just me or if it's, it's the case with all of them. I find that the, the scaleless snakes shed way more often. Hey, Daddy wants to go for a walk. They, they shed more often, I noticed. I think they do. And I don't know if it's, once again, it's just because she's a, a baby that she's shedding more. But I feel like she's shedding more frequently. But she eats like a horse. Anything you feed her, she'll eat. I feed them live, too. A lot of people are like, oh, don't feed live to the, to the scaleless. Nope. She eats live. She eats anything I give her. She poops well. She moves around fine. And you know what? She sheds fine as long as, like I said, I keep her skin nice and moisturized. And once again, you could literally do this once a week. That's all you got to do. Once a week, you rub it on. They like it. They, they seem like they, they, they are much happier when they have a little bit of moisture in their skin. And I give her a hide box. Here's a, here's a little tub I got her in. Hide box, water bowl. I put paper towels down. A lot of people say don't use, I don't use shavings on any of my, I don't use coconut or any kind of shavings, aspen, on any of my snakes. So I just put her right onto what I normally do, which is paper towels. A lot of people are keeping the scaleless ones on paper towels, even if they're other snakes or on coconut ship bedding or anything like that, just because it seems to work better. But once again, paper towels, bounty paper towels. You put some bag bomb on once a week. You want to be a neurotic, you put it on twice a week. You rub it in there, keep them nice and moisturized. You put them back in the, in the thing, you feed them, and do everything exactly the same. You change their water every couple days, and they thrive, and she's growing well. She's probably bigger than the other hatchlings that I produced in 2019, and I'm not really, and I'm not really feeding her any more or less. She's just growing well. She's doing well. I don't see any negatives. Believe me, I have spider ball pythons, and I have... Uh, jaguar carpet pythons, those things look a lot worse. You know, they do kooky things, you know, neurologically speaking, which I don't mind, but uh, these scaleless ball pythons are perfect, I think. And once again, you just have to figure out a system. Once you get the system down, you don't have to worry about anything. You're checking your snakes every couple of days anyway to clean their tubs, give them water, grab the bag bomb, you grab a little bit, you rub it on, slat it on, and you put them back. I could do 20 snakes in, in, in 30 seconds, it will take. So, it's no more work. I think it's 100% worth it because I love the way the scaleless uh, ball pythons look. Actually, I think, she's, I think she's about to shed. You see, look at this. She was actually probably about to go into a shed, so it's good that I moisturized her. Probably uh, when I put her back in this tub later today, she'll be completely shed, it, shed out. And uh, once again, I, I should start tracking and writing down the sheds for these because I'm really positive that this girl is shedding at least double as much as the regular will be. Look at this guy. He's going for a little, uh, a little jaunt around there. He wants to check out the uh, studio here. So the bottom line is that if you like the way the scaleless looks, and of course I saw um, Garrick the Meyer did a, has an amazing looking banana, I think or it's, it's a coral glow, pretty much the same thing. Coral glow, um, scaleless. I think he also produced a leucistic. They're just exquisite looking. They're really cool looking. And I can't wait. This year, hopefully, I'll produce a few more of these. I might even have a microscale scaleless this year because I'm doing scale, uh, microscale to microscale. And I think, you know, once again, it's not for everyone. But if you happen to like this and find it interesting like I do, um, I think it's going to be uh, a new, I guess, side of ball python breeding that maybe some people will specialize in. Uh, maybe some people have it as part of their collection. I don't think it's going to be a huge part of my collection. But I'm certainly going to have a whole bunch of them. I'm looking to produce pied uh, scaleless, clown scaleless, and see what they look like. Um, I think they're going to be super cool. And once again, we can mix all the different colors and pattern variations into them. And it, it kind of adds another level of excitement that we haven't seen because it, these snakes really do look different. And you can see, look, the shed's completely coming off. I don't want to pull it off myself. Um, but you can see, here it is. You can, it's exposed in the underlying body. Once again, I, just in time, I got some nice moisturizer on her. She'll shed later, and I'll show her to you probably in a, in a daily vlog in the next day or so so you can see what she looks like fully shed out. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's little uh, quickie that we got you on scaleless ball pythons, how to breed them, how to keep them. Remember, you need a scaleless head to scaleless head, at least 25% chance. Remember, it's a recessive uh, morph. You can produce this fully scaleless animal. I only hit on one last year, so my odds weren't so great. I got a couple of scaleless heads. 
Hopefully this year we'll get a couple more fully skeletal animals like this because they're super cool. All right, guys, subscribe. Don't forget, turn on your notifications, hit that like button, and we'll be back tomorrow morning. Thank you.